And let's get into the next part. Information, because next week it will be talking about uh, customer lifetime values or how to learn. Um, so what are the components of a modern marketing information system? What are the components of a modern marketing information system? Four P's is how you analyze details, yes. How can you get information for studying the four P's? How can you get info? Survey. Surveying people, yes. Research, research yes. Surveying people is research. There's, there's two types of research again. What's the difference between primary and secondary research? What is primary research? First hand. First hand. You go, you get the actual answer. You don't trust anybody else to give you what they think the answer is. Secondary means somebody else collected the information and you use what they found. What is the problem with finding what other people found? They, yes? Yeah, it's not exactly accurate. Yes, SRC. When you get the information, you will make mistakes. You will say, I think they mean this, but you're wrong. So you will have mistakes. And if you have somebody else giving you information, you're going to have double the mistakes. So be very careful about that. Yes? And the secondary information can also be very biased. It, it could be biased. Because what he gets, he will think this is what it means, and he will bias it. And he will tell me, here are the facts, but they're biased from him. Right. He only chose to research in his bedroom. <laughs> and only his girlfriend was there, so it's a little bit biased. Versus you surveyed only in your kitchen, and only one person was there, or nobody was there. So those types of details will be biased. Yes. Make sure you're aware. Which one's better? They're both good, yes. That's a trick question. You, you should do both. You should go and check people to survey your self-reliance is not wrong. And then you should also check what do the other experts of the world think? What are the other writers writing? What are the other researchers saying? And then you can say, are they idiots or are they smart? My results say this. And you can compare. That's your research. How can companies collect this? Files? Labs? You could have a lab, yes. In marketing, some businesses that are selling things, they will say that we'll have a focus group lab and we'll take people into a special area. That's one way to do it. Yes, what else? Statistics, yes. You can study. Uh, special numbers about other people's studies of things, yes? What were you saying? Somebody else? Read other books. I think somebody was saying, yes, you can read what other people are writing about it. There's lots of ways. Don't forget social media analytics, big data analytics. That is what I think is the most important thing for students to understand. What are the big companies usually doing? How are the big companies getting information or managing information? They have their own research company. They'll have their own research departments and things, yes. What is it usually called? Social media analytics, they will use. But they also use multi-million dollar information collection and information management systems. What's that called? MIS, Management Information Systems. Yes, make sure that you're aware of those things. How can marketers accurately measure and forecast demand? Make sure that you're aware of that stuff. So what is a marketing information system? Not management information system, it's different, but a marketing information system. You must understand MIS, management information system, but this is slightly different. Marketing information system consists of people, equipment, procedures to gather, sort, analyze, evaluate, distribute needed, timely, accurate information to make marketing decisions. Same thing as marketing information system and management information system so far. Um, internal records, market intelligence. Obviously, you should develop 
an expertise. You should develop a database of this information. You can order some of this information. Uh, find out how people are ordering. Do they buy it every year at September? Do they buy it every year at Christmas time? Do they buy it only in the summertime? The sales information. How much sales do you have? What are the databases that can control that? As we identified, McKinsey will have a big database. Embassies will have a big database. Universities, researchers will have a big database. Benefit from that. Some teachers used to teach students a long time ago. They were saying that if you want to be a good student, you have to do the work on your own. Little Jimmy, don't cheat and look at the work from Susie. That's cheating. I think that's the old style. I think if you want to be good at business, good at marketing, good at management, you must learn, do it on your own, fine, but what's better is learn how to work with other people also. So other students studied this before. How many of you asked your professors for the student essays from last year? How many people? If you don't have your hand up, kick yourself in your butt. Why not? That's not your problem. You should at least try, right? It is there. The professor should have a whole bunch. If he doesn't, maybe it's in a special filing container. But it has been done. You should learn from them. You learn much faster. If you can't get it from the professor, you can talk to the older students. I will give you that. Almost all of you should be doing and finishing your uh, midterm test that I gave you in September, you're supposed to get ready to hand it back to me October 6th. You should be finished before October 16. But most of these research projects have already been done. Why don't you get these results that have been done and it will help you learn a lot faster. So far, nobody has asked me for those old information. That's just part of collecting information. It's not cheating. If you use their information exactly, word for word, and just change the name, I will know. That's cheating, but you can benefit from it. I will take all of the information and put it through uh, plagiarism detection equipment. So you can't just copy and paste, but you can get some information. So learn about those databases. What is marketing research? It's the systematic design, collection, analysis, reporting of data and findings of the important information specific to marketing for the company. Research process, of course, define the problem and develop a plan to learn about it. Then, after you have the plan, go and collect the information. Then analyze it. What does that mean? Does that mean you have to use statistics? Everybody here loves multivariate factor analysis, regression analysis, right? You can do that. That's not what it means. If you like it, go ahead. I don't like it. <laughs> I'll give you good marks, but I don't like it. I prefer you go and you test what the customer likes. Take a picture of what the customer says. Take a video of what the customer does. Does the customer go when you ask them a question? That tells you a lot. If, they, if you ask them a question about how often do you eat these, and they go, oh, yeah, lots. That answer is lots, but their face tells you a completely different story. So make sure you analyze. They said lots, so that's the collection of information, and you must write that in your papers, but you must say, these say this, but they have a completely different meaning because of their face. And you can't use statistics to analyze that. So with marketing, the relationships are very important. And of course, after you get the background information, after you are uh, comfortable with some information, then once you're a bit of an expert, then you can go talk to your dream companies. Survey them. Find out what they're doing. Um, present your findings to them. Who cares about me? I'm a boring old man. Yes, I will give you a grade for university, but that's not as important as your future. You want to start a company? Present the findings for me to help you present it to customers or investors. Define the problem. We understand that. We've talked about it. Step two, develop the research plan. We've talked about that. Step uh, database management. 
You understand where is the biggest database? The internet, right? I spy, is that what you said? <laughs> yeah, Best Buy is great. Uh, maybe not so much. <laughs> the internet, you can research information online. Make sure you're aware of that. Um, a lot of, does anybody here get into hacking? Is there anybody here that's a hacker? If there are any hackers here that know how to hack into my database or another student's database, you can do that for a class project. If you show the rest of the class what you're doing, they will learn so much, I will give you full marks, very generous marks for being able to do it. It is very valuable. When I was doing my second MBA, I learned how to get into company databases. One of my best friends in Korea, he was working for Dongwon, Dongwon Changchi, the tuna company. And he was a new recruit. So he told me what his email address was. And so I was able, through hacking, to get into his computer. And I saw his email. And he said, yeah, that's OK. Go ahead, do it. So I was showing the class at the end of the research project. Here's what I found. Here's what he's doing. Oh, just a minute. Here's an email saying he got a $150,000 investment. What? My friend got $150,000? Let me, that's not my friend. The computer address, the IP address, one letter different, it was the CEO's email address that I hacked into by mistake. So you can get this information. It's not too hard. I'm not a computer genius. But if I can do it, you guys can do that stuff. I had permission to do it, and I made an honest mistake, yes. And I wasn't using it for my benefit. Yes, you can hack, that's, that's legal. If you hurt somebody, that could be illegal. It depends what you're doing. I'm not a lawyer, find out on your own, but I'm telling you, need to learn how to do this stuff. Research approaches, I, we just talked about it. You can do a research focus group, find what other people say. Survey people, the best way to do it is survey you guys are all reasonable people. You like me to speak very professional, just proper English. You don't want me to be direct and, and, and use bad words, right? So I will use the professional words. When you're <laughs> surveying people, you should survey, yes, nice students because they're friendly and close to you. Maybe you don't survey students because they're geniuses, or maybe you don't survey students because they're super rich, or maybe you don't survey students because they have a lot of experience. But they're good because after you survey them, they will tell you, that's a stupid question. Or, I don't know. Or they will tell you these basic details. After they help you, then go talk to the more serious companies, your employers. Survey your employers once you're prepared. Learn about the behavior. Sometimes just the face can tell you a lot. Experiment. You can use questionnaires, qualitative measures, technical devices. So a questionnaire is just a survey. Here's a question. Can you answer this? How can you give somebody a survey today? What's the easiest way? If, if Google, Google Docs. You can do a survey through Google Docs and open it to the world and send it to hundreds of people, here, can you complete this? You can also do that through Facebook. You can make a survey on Facebook. You know how you put a post in Facebook and you can make a comment on Facebook, but there is a way to make your post a questionnaire and they just have to check the boxes. That's very, very important to be able to know. So your qualitative measures. There are some programs, I don't think Facebook does it, but they will say automatically, you had 516 people answered this. And the mean is this, the median is this, the average is this, the standard deviation is this. Facebook doesn't tell you that. Do you know any companies that do tell you that for free, that students can use? SurveyMonkey is one program. It's free. And it's in Korean or it's in English. You can have it in both languages. You can make a bunch of questions and just send it out to anybody. They can fill it out, 
And the SurveyMonkey computer program will tell you what the quantitative details are. What is the average in the statistics? What about if you use qualitative measures? Qualitative means you don't need the numbers as much. Qualitative means you're recording the, the image, the sound, the feel, the words. How do you do that? How do you record that? What are the technical devices to do that? What is your answer? I'm recording now. You can record somebody or video somebody. Yes. So make sure you think about that. When you're surveying people, you can video them or take pictures of them. Um, that's usually a good thing to do. Qualitative techniques, word associations, visualizations, projective techniques, laddering. Uh, for example, um, there's many ways that you can get to the director of your dream company. You want to work with Samsung? Start by interviewing your friends. Start by interviewing other students. Ask them the question here. And ask them, do they know anybody with Samsung? Then you can go to the Samsung company and you can start in the parking lot. Survey the Ajishi or the guys that are at the parking lot, the front gate. Once you find information from them, then you can go inside and ask the people at the information center. They will tell you information about what the other managers are doing or where people like to go chit chat, how they like to go to the Starbucks coffee shop or something for lunch. Then you can go to the Starbucks coffee shop and interview people there relaxed. After you get a bunch of information from those lower people, then you know enough secret information, you can sound very intelligent and go talk to the managers or the directors. Okay? Yes? Um, if we video camera people, do we need to have them sign off on this kind of thing? Or? It's very professional if you do, but I would think a lot of people in Korea might not worry about it too much. And I don't think you're making a million dollars off of the class project. I hope you are. If you're worried about it, go ahead and do it. I don't think a lot of people worry about those litigations in Korea. Um, what else? Let's say you want to survey somebody in Samsung that sells the Samsung new Galaxy 5. You want to survey the director but you don't know him, how can you get a contact to tell you valuable information so that you sound intelligent before you go talk to that director? How can you do that? Parking lot guy, information desk, Starbucks, okay, we did that. What else? Social media, social media. media. Social media, how? How are you going to use social media? Which websites? Sure, check Samsung's website. And Samsung has social media sites. They will have the Samsung blogs, like the Naver blogs. You will see what people at Samsung are chatting about. Go in there, see that, find somebody that's friendly and ask them questions. What is a professional website for introducing you to work people? LinkedIn. Use LinkedIn. Make sure you have a LinkedIn profile. Make sure you have name cards so you look professional. Go to LinkedIn and type in Samsung and marketing, Galaxy 5. And you will see hundreds of people working with Samsung, working with the marketing department in LinkedIn. You can send them all friend requests. Send them some questions. If some people start answering you, you can chit chat with them. They can introduce you to people they used to know. Some of the best student essays I've ever seen developed and got to the top levels of companies because strangers in LinkedIn introduced them. Don't underestimate the power of social media for collecting information. Sampling plan. Um, who is going to be surveyed? How many people should be surveyed? Good question. Who do you want to survey? You want to survey and get a job working for Samsung Galaxy International Marketing Department. Do you go straight to the director? No, because you don't know very much about it yet. If you don't know about it and you go to the top person, you're going to sound silly. You won't sound very smart. You start with surveying regular people and learn from people around you. 
Learn from the family around you, your relatives. This is when you're marketing any product and your student projects. Then, after you learn from the people at a close level, then you try to move to a higher level. Do you have a father or mother or aunt or uncle working with Samsung? Do you know somebody else that you can introduce me to? Learn from them. That's much better than just going to the director's door directly. Eventually, you can go through LinkedIn and somebody might introduce you. That is the best. Um, how many people should you survey? More than 40. 30 is usually the minimum amount to be statistically significant. But if you're just going to survey just the director of marketing of Samsung, just the one person, that's okay. But when you survey that one person, then you need to ask him many questions or her many questions. More than 30 questions, more than 40 questions. Yes, make sure you're aware of that. Um, estimating future demand. How would you know this? Okay, what kind of statistics will help you know how many I can sell? Supply and demand? How much was sold before? How much was sold last month? Yes. How much was sold last year? Yes. In January, February, March, April, May, June, all the way up to December, which months sell the most? Are we in a high month or a low month? Are you very busy right now or not very busy right now? Yes, you can find that information. Anything else? Social media, social media. How can you use that? Yes, how can you use social media? How many people are going to the website or the blogs and looking at it? With the YouTube views, how many people are viewing it? All of you probably shared something. How do you know? How do you know what he is sharing about my Samsung phone? How do you look at the history? Social media analytics, yes. Social media is great, but it doesn't mean shit if you don't look at the analytics. Analytics teach you 10 times more. It will tell you how many people are sharing, how many people are looking. It will tell you if you have a video, how many people come in and then they stop here. The video is this long. People come in and they watch it, but right at 15 seconds, they stop looking at it. Maybe your video shows a picture of me and I scare everybody away, so the next time, make a video without me. Put a mask on my face. It will tell you how to be more effective. Sometimes it will show you are watching the video and then it will show you're sharing the video with many people at 15 seconds. So it will teach you, you need to do more. Whatever you're doing at that 15 seconds, do that more. Do it again in the next video, in the next video, in the next video. That is what's making you grow the most. That is incredibly valuable that you won't even know from going to the Starbucks with the directors. Social media analytics, make sure you're aware of that stuff. And of course, you can think about the demographics, economics, social, cultural, natural, technological, political, legal. There's many aspects that come into it. You can specialize in one specific area if you want, or you can be comprehensive. Just make sure you understand when you're researching something, there's always a different view. You're thinking about something, somebody might always think something differently. So don't just go to the director and say, you know this, because maybe you're wrong. Maybe that's only what some people think. Social cultural environment, there's lots of different values and views. Views of themselves, views of others, views of organizations, views of society, views of nature, views of the universe. With this in mind, what is your view on gambling? What's your view on Hattu? Or Go Stop? What are the other gambling, um, gambling games in Korea? Okay, ba and Badu and stuff like that too, yes? Go Stop, of course. Go Stop is the biggest one. 
holy cow, several people start smiling. I say, go stop, and everybody, a bunch of smiles. Wow, so many people smiling. Look at everybody. Go stop. What is go stop? Many people in the world don't know what go stop is. What is it? <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. I don't know. Cards. Gambling with plastic cards. <laughs> Basically, you guys know of Kings and Little Ones, where you have the, the cards, a deck of cards, you're playing uh, poker? Yeah. You can play poker and there's 21, or blackjack, everybody knows that. Well, that's not Ghost Up. It's the same idea, you have cards, they all have different pictures, like jacks and queens and kings, but in Ghost Up, you're supposed to match them together. Like there's four kings and four jacks, you're supposed to match them together. If you have a good match, then you can win. It sounds simple, but it's not that simple. <laughs> um, it's very, very popular. So by learning some of this information, it's fun. Everybody is smiling here. One of the first times in class, everybody in my class is smiling. Maybe one person's not smiling too much. Only one person in the class might not play. Is that good? Is gambling and playing ghost stop, is it good? Is it ethical? Any comments? Can you play? Can I play it? Sure. And I can drink booze and dance and sing and do a whole bunch of things. It's funny what a professor can do. Anything else? The whole idea of casinos. We'll talk about that next week unless you propose you want to do Khan Academy or a social media case study. And if you want, contact me very quickly and then tell everybody else. But the, um, this case is talking about casinos. Has anybody watched that movie where there is, who, what's his name, Spacey? Kevin, Kevin Spacey? 21. Yeah, it, was, it was called 21. It's about university students again, can control the world. And the smart students, they were playing this gambling game. And they learn how to win with a special formula information systems. They know the system to beat the gambling. And they were able to go to Las Vegas and make millions of dollars, well, hundreds of thousands of dollars. Is that ethical? Should I teach you that? Yes. <laughs> yes. American. Uncertainty avoidance very low. No problem. Yes. No Korean students say anything. Do you want me to teach you how to gamble? Do you want me to teach you how to win? It sure is not illegal. Yes, it is. <laughs> they say it's not illegal, yeah. but there are laws against it. Yes. Frowned, frowned upon. Yes. What about in Korea? Is gambling illegal in Korea? No. You want to bring out some cards and start gambling here? If you gamble here, I'd probably be fired and you could be arrested. What about, we know that Las Vegas, it's okay to gamble, right? Up here, our competitive advantage. You must know quality is the best thing to focus on. Price is dangerous. You must know the technology, location, and laws. What if you go on a vacation to Las Vegas and you win $100,000? And then you come back and you buy me lots of presents. I will love you, but is that okay? Yeah, why not? You could go to jail in Korea. Why? Because the Korean government, the laws, apply to Korean people anywhere on the planet. Doesn't matter if you're outside Korea, you're not supposed to gamble. And if you bring money into Korea that you won from that, that is considered illegal. You're supposed to tell immigration, I won this money gambling, and then you have to pay lots and lots of taxes, maybe you'll have a criminal record. Be very careful about that stuff. Is it okay to teach that stuff? How could you win? There are ways to teach you how to win. That movie called 21, they're teaching people information, how to win your business. How can I teach you this stuff? Lots of money. Who usually wins? Is there a way to beat the casino? Nowadays, there's very few people that can cheat and they can beat the system. But in general, 
Can you be a professional gambler? Yes. Yes? Is, is, is that a, is it, yes, there are professional poker players going around the world. Yes, there's the Texas Hold'em champions around the world. I know people that do it. They, all they do is they go from city to city around the world playing, winning, and they live off the money they won. It's illegal in Korea, but people do it. But is that a, uh, is it a real business? Should you be learning about that? You guys know that there's technologies nowadays that generally makes the casinos make money. Casinos generally don't lose money. I used to, um, I basically went into semi-retirement several years ago and for fun I opened up a, a bar franchise. And I had people working in my bar that were professional sort of gamblers. Like the, the best guy in my bar was the chef, the cook. And he said, even though he could do anything with the cards, he could mix up all of the cards, take all of these cards, the top card, mix them up and make it all crazy so you think it's mixed up and still give you the red card all the time. You would think it's magic, but he said he was terrible. His younger brother was 10 times better. His younger brother was a casino dealer in the Philippines. Some of these casinos, they have computer programs where you cannot lose two nights in a row. If you lose two nights in a row, they change your job. You're, you're gone. So what are those systems? How do they manage that information? Why would you manage that information? How would a casino know? How much should I spend on you? Has anybody been to a casino before? Koreans are allowed to go to Korean casinos here, and foreigners are allowed to go to foreign casinos here, so you can go, just most people don't know that. So one person, two people have been to casinos? Tell us, tell the rest of the class, what's it like at a casino? Can you drink alcohol or, or food? Yes, uh, I could drink alcohol. Last year I was in, I visited a casino in UK, and uh, they, I, yeah, I, I lose a lot, a lot of money, maybe 300 pounds. You, you lost a lot? Yeah, yeah, sure. Maybe we don't want to hear that story then. <laughs> anyway, they, they use a strange machine to share the cards. A uh, machine is giving the cards away, yes. What, what, about, um, what about things like the room? Describe the casino room. Marketing is not just the cards. Marketing is the idea, the value, the environment, everything, right? What does a casino room look like? Flashing lights everywhere. Um, like if someone wins, it make it really obvious someone wins. So, yeah. Lots of loud sounds and lights. Why? What is the marketing reason? They want to make some customers. Sorry? I don't know what to make. Consumer, customer, Yes. The more you hear lots of energy, the more you hear lots of sound, the more you get excited. The more you get excited, the stupider you become. <laughs> the more you get excited, okay, one more, one more, one more. Somebody's winning. I'm going to be next. I'm going to be next. Well, yes. Also, you can see the positive posters. Like, you can do it or you can win. There's signs everywhere. You're going to win. Big winner. Jackpot, jackpot, jackpot. What does that happen? What does it, what, what does it happen? What, what happens to you? Your brain starts thinking you will get the jackpot. So you forget your intelligence and you start doing more of this gambling. What else? Uh, there is no mirror and window. So There's no win. Okay, just, okay, good. You know it. What is dangerous about this? Well, are, aren't we protected? This window, we have very beautiful bars and gates on our window here. You don't, know, you don't know how many times you stand for gambling. You don't know if it's late or not. You don't know if it's dinner time or breakfast time. You just stay there all the time. Lots of lights. You think it's 2 p.m., 3 p.m. I'm not late. My wife's not going to get angry. No problem. Right. What else? Related to windows, no clocks. They don't want you to worry about being late. They, oh, you're only here for a short time. 
Most people are talking short time, short time, sure, just quick thing. They don't make you feel like you're there for a long time usually. Yes, all of that is part of marketing. The case study that we talk about, it, uh, next week it will talk quite a bit about um, this stuff. But this week, let's focus a little bit more on this. Who are these companies? Ivory. Sorry? Ivory Soap. Ivory Soap, okay. Kimberly Clark is one of the companies. Procter & Gamble is another one of the companies. Where do they come from? United States, okay. Where do the best diapers, or where did the diapers really... First of all, what type of diapers are there? Am I wearing any diapers? Can you tell? Disposable diapers, usually... Can you tell if I'm wearing diapers or not? <laughs> don't, don't do this, it's scaring you. There's, there's, there's a little bit of a, of a line here, but that's from my cushion. Don't, you know, don't worry about it. But can you tell? You can't tell. Old diapers or baby diapers are very thick, right? Not always. You know diapers when you were a child 20 years ago. But nowadays, the diapers are usually very thin. Who made the thin technology? Or how was that first diaper made? The very first diaper. How was it made? That, how was the first diaper made? It was made from cloth, yes. I was trying to trick you. I'm trying to do marketing by getting your brain to think thick and big. And so I was trying to trick you to think of the baby diapers that are very big and fat. Those diapers were initially made with tree bark and lots of wood or paper inside like a bag. So when the baby pees on the bag, the bag gets wet and all of the paper inside gets wet and it absorbs it so it doesn't go on the floor or the rug. But that was not the first one. The first diaper was just that small little diaper that they would wear a piece of cloth. Is that good or bad when you get that cloth full of yuck? Is that good? No? no. no? Why not? Because you have to clean it? Or you, you could reuse it. Oh, yuck! Dirty old man, he has like a snot rag in his pocket or a diaper in his pocket. What is more sanitary? What is cleaner? Plastic next to your skin? Next to urine and feces poop? Or cotton or silk diapers that you can wash? <coughs> Usually the best style of care is with the cloth, cotton. Does your mom use that? Does your aunt or your uncles, your fathers, your, your, uh, your family, do they use cloth? Or the instant diapers? Disposable diapers. Why? This is cheap. Mm, this, it might be a little bit more expensive than this. This type of material, after I use it, I don't throw it in the garbage. You, you go like this. <laughs> Then you throw it in the washing machine and you can use it again. Here, little Johnny or my, my son Terry, you can use a new diaper. The old style you can throw out. So this style is actually cheaper than the other style. So what happened? Why did we change from cloth to big diapers? What was the management motivation? Where are these companies made? What were the American people usually thinking? Men and women were both working and they both didn't have time to take care of the children. So they'd have the instant ones. These take time. You have to clean them and then wash them and then dry them and then fold them and, and make them again. And you have to watch all the time. As Soon as this is dirty, you've got to change it right away. 
But the plastic ones, the baby can stay in the poop for hours before you have to change it. So romantic. I'm doing a good job of marketing, aren't I? So if the old diapers, the thick ones, were full of paper, what is this case talking about? What is the new style of diaper? Where did the advanced disposable diapers come from? And what made them change from the thick paper and wood style, pulp style, to the thin disposable diapers? How did they change? Where did they get changed? What we were supposed to all be reading? Uh, Japan. Japan, yes. Japan invented a chemical that will absorb all of the liquid. So you put it into your glass of water and the water disappears. They took that and put it into the baby's panties or the diapers. So when they pee, all of the water disappears into that little chemical. But it is a chemical. Yes. Japan invented it. Is Japan an expert in diapers? Does everybody wear diapers? Do people like diapers in Japan? Most people in Japan use this style of diaper, the cloth diaper. It's more natural. It's more family. It's more security. It's more feeling than the plastic style. The North American companies did their research an American company competing with another American company. How can we win? The best answer does not come from your self-environment. Usually, you need to do some sort of surveying internationally. Find what other people are doing. Go to the embassies. Find out what other people are doing in other countries. They found Japanese had this new special chemical to absorb all of the water. They can put it into the diapers, make it much smaller. It's actually cheaper. And you can put more diapers in a box. You can do more better delivery, better transportation. And when the baby is with you, your purse, when you're carrying the purse or your bag, doesn't have to be a huge bag. It could be a very small bag. Used in North America for North Americans, but completely designed and developed by other countries. Make sure when you're doing your research project, don't make the mistake of only looking around yourself. Make sure you're collecting primary research yourself and check what other people are doing and saying, not just in your environment, but other internationally. And again, October 6th, I will be able to introduce you when you are presenting your papers, maybe your grants also, if possible. You can present that to uh, from Hong Kong and they can give you comments. Any other questions? Next class you can talk to me more about the details of this. Next class we can talk about your research findings. What research project are you doing? What grant are you doing? If you don't know you can talk to the class TA Nikolai and if you don't have very comfortable feelings about your research project, next class Bring in at least three questions. Everybody, three questions, three questions, three questions about your project. How can I find information? What research project should I do? Where can I get a grant? How should I fill out the grant? Any questions you want. If you don't know how to finish your paper, get three questions and we will ask in the class. We will make groups and talk about that.